guys, welcome to the Side Quest Podcast, the unofficial podcast of Fitocracy. If you have not yet gone to iTunes and left us a review, please do that as soon as you get done listening to this episode. Leave us a review, subscribe to us there. It helps us move up the charts so more people can hear the awesome interviews that you're listening to and have been listening to. If you want to follow us on Twitter, check us out at SideQuest FM. Also on Instagram at SideQuest FM. You can find us and like us on Facebook there as well and share all of our cool stuff with all of your friends at SideQuest Podcast. Uh, just search for us there. Uh, we're also on Google Plus if you want to check us out there as well. And I have a great guest tonight, today, whatever time you're listening to the show. Uh, his name is Brian Compton, straight out of Compton. That's right. Uh, he is the owner of Fact and Fitness. Uh, he is a North Carolina native, so we got a lot, a lot of North Carolina things going on. Uh, and uh, he is a photography coach. He just got one of his first articles published on photography the uh, last week. Uh, so congratulations on that, Brian. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Awesome. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, about Brian Compton. Okay. Uh, well, unfortunately, I'm not actually straight out of Compton. Otherwise, I'd be, be a lot cooler. Um, <laughs> like you mentioned, uh, just North, North Carolina. I actually live in Concord, uh, just outside, or just north of Charlotte, uh, for those that are familiar. I, uh, I actually I work in IT at my, my day job in Concord. Um, I, I went to school at Appalachia State University, got a degree in IT, been working in that field ever since. Um, you know, always had an interest in, you know, nutrition, health, exercise, all that fun stuff. And, you know, a couple of years ago, kind of took it for more, you know, instead of just an interest to, you know, something I you know, really started pursuing, um, you know, read a lot more about it, found all the, you know, kind of the people that knew what they were talking about and kind of started following them and, you know, started a blog and, and you know, here we are. So that, that's the very the, the watered down version to keep from from rambling. <laughs> <laughs> rambling happens. Um, yeah. So I know you deal a lot with the metabolic effect. Can you describe what that is and how you use it in your programs? Yeah. But, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, it's a metabolic effect is a, a clinic and and they're actually in Winston Salem. So they're you know uh, you're North Carolina. You probably know um, pretty familiar where that's at. They're about an hour north of me, and um, that actually doesn't have anything to do with why I you know I chose them or anything, but um, it's essentially just you know a clinic. They um they have online certifications for you know fat loss coaches, you know nutrition consultants, personal trainers, and things like that. Um, I kind of I stumbled across them a few years ago. Um, like I said, just when I was you know kind of trying to get involved in this, and um, their you know their kind of mantra just kind of made the most sense to me or their approach to to fitness and nutrition. So I you know, chose to, to get their uh, personal trainer certification, their um, the level one uh, hormonal fat loss nutrition consultant certification. I got both of those earlier this year. Um, so basically, I just, you know, I, I really, I like their approach to, to fat loss. So that's just, it was in most in line with what I wanted to do. So I kind of jumped on board and have been using their stuff ever since. Um, basically, just being certified through them just allows me to use some of their protocols that they use and they have like an actual clinic in Winston-Salem where they see people and train clients and everything. Um, but you know, they do online coaching as well and just, you know, having their, uh, the certifications allows me to use some of their protocols and clinical tools with, you know, clients online, stuff like that. So it's, it's been, it's been really awesome. Um, I've had, you know, great results with it, um, in the past, you know, year or so doing the, uh, the online coaching thing. So it's, it's been, been a lot of fun. Okay. Um, so you studied IT at Appalachian State. Woo woo, Mountaineers. You know uh, it. Yep. Uh, wish they could have. Oh man, would have loved to see them beat Michigan again that that second time. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. didn't happen this go round. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I wanted to ask. So, so you studied IT. So were you were you like a gym rat in college, and it just stayed with you, or was it a was it a passion that you had? But you like was it a mix? You were like ah, IT fitness. I'll go IT because you probably make more money. Like, what was your thinking, and how did you kind of come back into the fitness world? Yeah, it, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't think of a personal trainer being an IT guy, or you know, vice versa. <laughs> um, but I was always, you know, um, like the real, like the skinny kid, you know, growing up. Um, when I went to when I went to App, a few of my you know good friends that went with me, they were um, you know freshmen going onto the uh, the football team actually. So they're the ones that kind of got me into working out. So you know, that's when I. 
I just I kind of fell in love with it, you know, going to the gym with them. But that was back in the days where you know you you know chest day was Monday, and you know you do <laughs> chest by back by, and like you know right. you don't squat because squatting's bad for your knees, and just all this like ridiculous stuff that you know obviously I've since you know known that that's you know no longer true. Um, but yeah, no, I just I kind of I just fell in love with working out then, but I you know I never really thought that that was something that I would pursue like after school, and you know I, and I did really love IT, and I still do. Um, but I just, like I said, over, over the past couple of years, just, I, I don't know. I just, I've, I've, I've always wanted, I've always enjoyed helping people. And I just, I feel like if, you know, this route allows me to help people more, it's something that I'm more passionate about than, you know, helping someone fix their printer or, you know, get a virus <laughs> off the computer. <laughs> don't fix the printer. Just go buy a new one because the ink's going to cost you just as much. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a, we actually, our, uh, like I, you know, you, you work on that stuff all day long, and then you come home and like your own printer doesn't work, or like you know, my, my parents would call me and say, you know, hey, can you you know, can you come get a virus off our computer or see why we can't get on the network at our house? And I'm just like, ah, uh, yeah, you know, I, I go to help, but it's like, man, I've been doing this for like eight hours a day. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I I I totally understand. Uh, the corporate world, man, it just it uh, it's it's a grind that like it sucks. <laughs> to be honest, it sucks. Um, all right, so you got your first article published uh, from your blog on Fitocracy. Um, so tell me, congratulations on that, by the way. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, tell me a little about, um, you know, where your your blog ideas come from. Do you do you have? Do they just pop up randomly? Are they things you work on over time? What is the process for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think of most of it is just, you know, I'll just on my Facebook page. That's probably where I'm most active. Like, I'll just kind of you know, just post, you know, two or three things a day, just like little blurbs, you know, do this for fat loss or do this exercise or eat this food, just kind of stuff like that. And really the, the article ideas just come from the, the feedback that I get from folks. Like if someone comments and asks me like a really specific question that I know that, you know, that, then it kind of triggers something. I'm just like, you know what, if they have this question, then I bet you know, a lot of other people have this question. So that's kind of where I try and, and get most of that from. And I, and I don't write as much as I should. That's probably, that's, definitely my uh, weakest point right now. I just, I know I'm a sucky writer and it takes me a while to, to want to get to do that. But, um, but yeah, it's mostly just from the interaction from folks emailing me with questions, you know, they post on my Facebook page or direct message me with a question. And that's, I, that's what usually kind of gets turned into the topics for the articles. Okay. Um, so you mentioned in that article that, that you enjoy salads. Now I am a huge salad lover myself. I have eaten a salad every day for lunch uh, for two straight years, except on my honeymoon when I pretty much ate all of the haggis in Scotland. <laughs> all of it. Like I, I, I don't care that I gained like 10 pounds in Scotland because the haggis was awesome. Nice. Um, but anyways, so what does your salad look like? Describe what you put on it. Man, everything. That's a, like people that say salads are boring or like the, they're tasteless or something. They just, they've never made a good one. You know I mean? I agreed. Obviously, you know, you know, lettuce, kale or spinach, you know, as a base, um, I'm, you know, I, I, I like meat, so there's always at least, you know, chicken or bacon or something on there. I mean, tons of vegetables, you know, jalapenos, banana peppers. Um, I, I don't really do dairy anymore, so I don't really put much cheese on it. Um, but my wife makes an awesome, like, oil and vinegar-based dressing, uh, chia seeds. You know, sometimes I'll do ranch instead of the oil and vinegar. I mean, basically just I'll empty out our entire cupboard and throw it into my salad with, you know, any meat or vegetable I can find. And it's just I make them into these just – Giant mounds and the uh, there's an awesome tool. It's like a it's a salad chopper in a bowl. Oh just, yeah, yeah. It just blends it all up and it man, it's it's just it's awesome. Yeah, it's delicious. Uh, people at work all the time are like, oh my god, your salad looks so good. How do you make those tasty salads? And I'm like, um, I buy produce and I put, uh, <laughs> put it in there with some yep. chicken and some olive oil and it's yep. tasty. Um, so so you're new to to online coaching and and being in the fitness mm -hmm. world. Um. And and I know and you put a, a, a little blurb up on Facebook uh, of something you got from an email from a client. Um, can you describe the first moment that you got an email from a client that really like hit you in in, in the feels, as they say, um, and and made you realize that you were making a difference, or, or made you go, you know what, this just lit the fire in what I want to do. I mean, one um, a, a girl that um, she was actually she lives in the uh, the Netherlands. And um, you know, she and I would work together this summer. It was pretty. You can fill out the, you know, the kind of consultation form, and uh, she, you know, she was like, you know, I'm happy with my body. 
but I'm, you know, I have a new boyfriend and we're going on vacation in eight weeks and I want to look hot for him in my bathing suit. And I was like, well, that's cool motivation right there. But, um, but yeah, so we, you know, she was really on point, you know, we worked together for those eight weeks and, you know, when it was all over, you know, she had, you know, defined midsection, she had abs. And I mean, she just like sent me a message and said, like, I'm literally in tears, like with how happy I am with this. And I was like, that's freaking awesome. And I, and I had another guy actually recently, he, uh, message me and just, you know, he follows my Facebook page and social media and stuff. And we don't, you know, he's not a, a client per se. Um, but he just, he sent me a message just kind of out of the blue. It was like, you know, I've kind of everything you're saying online, follow your blog. And he's like, I've lost 20 pounds without really even trying to. And I was like, that's freaking awesome. Like this guy gets it. Amazing. It's just, yeah. It's just, it's, it's so rewarding just kind of hearing that stuff. And, you know, obviously it's not all about like getting abs or, or anything like that, but just like, you know, having a positive impact on people's life is just, it makes it, you know, totally worth it. I, I, I agree. Uh, it, it, I, I've gotten some positive feedback on, on the podcast and it's kind of made me smile. Uh, it's a lot better than doing that corporate grind where you're going through <laughs> team yeah. sports and coming in on Saturdays uh, yeah. anyways, and, so, printer. so, and printers, printers. I oh, don't even get me started. Don't get, I, you know what? I, I, no, I'm not, not going to, not going to do it. Just Let's not go there. Uh, Oh, printers. Um, so fat loss foods. Um, so that's what your article was 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 about. Um, mm -hmm. Now magazines and and media companies and and other people, Dr. Oz, namely, who I saw today on TV, and uh, I can't believe he gets. Anyways, um, yeah. So they all they all sell these these fat loss foods like eat this to burn your belly fat and eat this to do this and eat this to do that. What else, as a trainer, do you have to fight that the media perpetuates? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Um, I mean, that definitely, and just, you know, the idea that you have to, you know, eat less of anything and then do more exercise. You know, that's the, that's the traditional diet you trap, right? You, more. Yeah. Less, you exercise more. And, um, you know, there, there's a, I can't remember the stat exactly, but it's, you know, like 95% of people that go on a diet end up, gaining back the weight that they lost during the diet within the course of a year and like 66% of them end up fatter. So I mean that's just obviously the traditional eat less exercise more approach to dieting doesn't work. And that's right. kind of the, that's one of the you know the big components of the uh, the metabolic effect stuff. So that was something you know that they really like I said hit home with me and um, you know just I do anything I can to get people out of that mindset that you have to you know, go for these hour long runs and then come home and come home and eat, you know, just a salad, uh, you know, things like that. And that, which is another thing, you know, cardio being the, the best thing for fat loss, you know, you hear that all the time and, um, you know, that's just sure it can work, but you know, you're going to have to, in my opinion, implement some sort of resistance training. And, you know, obviously certainly the, the nutrition plays a major part in that as well, but yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, I agree with, with everything said there, um, I am not. A, I, I like sprinting. I'm not a huge runner. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sprinting is excellent. Yeah. So, though I am gonna do something crazy next spring and probably do a Spartan race, um, which means I'm gonna have to at least, at least be able to run somewhat three miles and not have my legs cave out on me. Um, how, I, how long are the Spartan ones? Well, there are like three different ones. There's like a Spartan mini. There's like a Spartan medium. And then there's like the we're really crazy dudes who want to like inflict the most pain upon ourselves. Uh, <laughs> it's like a full marathon with obstacles. And I'm just like, I just want to go, guys, I love the idea of a Spartan race, but you do realize that the guy who ran 26 miles from Thermop Marathon delivered his message and died. His heart <laughs> exploded. Like you're not meant to do that. Yeah, no, yeah that's that doesn't sound uh, very enjoyable to me. I did a warrior dash a couple years ago just because I had a group of friends that wanted to do it. But I, I have like I had asthma really bad as a child, so I've never really been into the running, and I still kind of have you know mild cases of it a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, it was three three point one miles and obstacles was about you know killed me over. So I'm <laughs> definitely done. I've retired from those. <laughs> um, so who inspired you the most? And uh, whether fitness, it can be anything, but who's inspired you the most? And if they're an author, what book from them would you recommend? Um, I guess one of the, the books that kind of got it started for me was the um, Engineering the Alpha, you know, Adam Bornstein yeah. and um, John Romanello. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of, yeah. of John. 
You've done his uh, his photography group, right? I, I did. I did his photography group. Uh, I am still waiting. And John, if you're listening to this, all right, I want my video of you dressed up as your D&D character at Gold's Gym. You owe me that. I know you've got to build that <laughs> armor, but come on. I want to see it because it's going to be epic. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of John's. Uh, I have I have given his book out or suggested his book to a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, he's the guy... Uh, that has inspired me to get on my, my fitness kick and, and eventually I, I'm studying to become a, a trainer now and get certified in that. But his, his book is what inspired me to get on onto that. Um, but, yeah, that, that's yeah. awesome. Um, and you, like, I, I, you know, I keep harping on the, the metabolic effect stuff, but uh, like the, his brothers Jade and uh, Keone Tata that, that kind of co-founded it, they wrote a book, uh, The Metabolic Effect Diet, that I guess is maybe two years ago. Um, that I mean, I still I refer to that thing, you know, almost daily. It's it's really excellent. Um, as far as you know, not really fitness related. Obviously, you know, guys like Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Work Week. That's Tim. That's a that's a popular one. Um, I guess the last book I finished was um, Before Happiness. Uh, Sean a Acor Acor. I can't remember his last name. Um, you know, just kind of positive reinforcement kind of thing. Um, that was that was a really interesting book. Um. I guess one of the maybe the bloggers right now that I'm really that I really like following is James Clear. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually was on uh, a podcast of some good friends of mine. Nice. Um, and I, their podcast is actually kind of getting this whole thing started has been like a one year, almost like an eight month process oh, where wow. I had this idea and then I was like, man, I'm gonna sit on it. I'm getting married. And then I get back and I'm like. Man, I like this idea. Uh, and then I heard James Clear uh, on on that podcast, um, and you know what? I'll name it here. It's my podcast. I can. Uh, my friends over at Listen Money Matters. Uh, okay. It's a financial podcast. They're, they're really awesome. Um, and and I heard him on that, and I was like, all right, that's it. Done. I'm doing it. I'm starting it. Um, and I eventually will get him on the show because I want to talk about ha good habits and how to build them yep. and how it works in uh, in fitness. Uh, and Tim Ferriss coming for you too. Just putting it out there. I, <laughs> I dream big. I swing for the fences. I hear you. <laughs> um, all right. So so all those all of those are are really good. Um, and people that I know, I, I was kind of maybe hoping you might have someone new and different. Um, what lift do you struggle with the most? Uh, pretty much anything. Any pressing. Like I I'm not a very good at bench pressing or like overhead pressing, um, I guess I mean my my body responds to those better with more volume, and I guess I just I just don't care as much about having like a big chest like I was trying to you know in college trying to like pick up chicks and stuff like that. You know I'm right now as well. Um, you know so for me now I, I focus more on the you know just trying to squat a lot or deadlift a lot and you know focus more on those exercises rather than just trying to see how much I can bench press. Um, so and those are def so those are definitely the the weakest for me, but you know mainly so just because I don't give them you know very much attention. Okay, all right. Uh, what are your current goals? Uh, fitness related or life or fitness, all the above? Life. You know what? We all have different goals. Uh, <laughs> well, that's kind of like that's why I named it Side Quest because being so photography was started by gamers who wanted to turn fitness into a game and I love video games and I love fitness and I was like how do I meld the two together well I love RPGs oh my god side quest and we all have tiny side quests in our life genius I, I love it <laughs> uh, I because I'm actually not a, a gamer so I, you know I'm like the outcast of photography I guess and, and especially your podcast listen to me you and some of the other folks talking about all, the, all these video games. And I'm just like, man, I haven't played video games since like Donkey Kong and Mortal Kombat. <laughs> hey, still great games, man. Yeah, hey, they were. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, go. Let's let's touch back on cool. on cool. Uh, on that. So, what are your current goals in, in life or fitness or, you know, have you taken a yodeling class that you want to get a certificate in yodeling in? <laughs> oh man, I, I wish. No, um, I get in, as far as you know, actual gym goals. Um, I wanted to do a 300-pound squat and a 400-pound deadlift, and I've, I've done the, the squat recently. Um, my deadlift max is, is 385, so I'm getting there. Nice, nice. Deadlift. Um, you know, I'm hoping, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, I guess outside of actual just 
gem numbers that I'm achieving for. You know, obviously I want you know this my first photography group that launched last week to do well. Um, you know, start a hopefully a second one, maybe first of the year. I anticipate that being a, a busy time with New Year resolutions and whatnot. Um, and I mean, really, just you know, grow the blog, do stuff like this that I've just you know never done before, and just you know get the the fact and fitness name out there. And you know, obviously one day I'd like to you know quit the, the IT printer world and, and do this stuff full time, but um, you know, it's, it takes time and I'm enjoying putting in the, the work so far. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I think that's one thing I'm, I, a lot of people, that I've learned, especially in fitness, is that it takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it takes, it's not gonna happen overnight unless you're injecting yourself with drugs. <laughs> um, and most of us are not Chris Evans, not saying that Chris Evans injects drugs, but if I was a Hollywood actor and they were like, hey, you're going to be a superhero, the thought might cross my mind that I might do it. Not saying that I would, but I would have that serious debate in my mind. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it, it takes time, and it's the journey. You know, like we, we always look for the end, but, you know, it's like, it's like taking a walk, in, in my opinion. You know, you, you take a walk, and you got to enjoy the nature around you. Your destination doesn't really matter. It's it's enjoying the yep. walk. Yep. Um, I agree. All right. So a, a little funny one here because I I gotta know what this means. Um, I have an idea and I'm hoping I'm hoping that you 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 took it from this. So I went through some of your Facebook posts. Um, I'm not stalking you. I promise. Um, hey, that's cool. <laughs> fantasy football. We're not gonna talk Panthers. D no. Mm -mm. Thank God there's a bye week so we can't lose. Yeah, uh, but can you explain sparkle motion? Oh, that's that's awesome. Um, did you ever see Donnie Darko? Yes, a very long time ago. Yeah, old Jake Gyllenhaal movie. His uh, the dance team um, on the on that movie was uh, was called Sparkle Motion, and that's that's our uh, our fantasy football team name. I've been with the same group of guys. This is actually our fourteenth season. In, wow. Uh, group. Yeah. So yeah, that's Sparkle Motion came from the uh, the dance team and Donnie Darko. Huh. That's okay. That's that. I love that. I, I I thought maybe it might have something to do with Chris Cluey in his book, um, but uh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> what have you learned as an entrepreneur that you did not know before? Um, I mean. I don't, hopefully it doesn't sound like a cop-out answer, but I mean, just kind of what we just talked about is that, you know, it's, it's not overnight. You know, you see all these guys that, that have success and that seems like they are overnight successes, but what you don't really realize is that they've, you know, spent five years or, you know, 10 years kind of, you know, just working their way up there. And, you know, you just kind of have to, have to expect that and know that, you know, you just, you got to put in the time and, and one day it'll, you know, when the time's right, it'll happen for you. All right. I, well, well said. I, I, I'm the overnight success. I think that's something that our generation battles with really, really hard. I, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've kind of had this thought for a while. Um, and it, it seems like the eighties, um, kind of had that me, 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 me mentality. And for most of us, at least for me, I was born in like 86. So it's kind of like you were kind of raised in that. And then you got like, you, I don't know, that mentality carried on, and I feel like it's really affected even the generation of, like, the early 90s and, and, and on more often because everything now is so accessible. It's now. I can get it now. I can get it now. Like, yep. it, very few people know what it's like for it to take, you know, for, for, for things to process and, and grow. I mean, I hated working on the farm when I was a kid because I was like, why can't these things just be done? I don't want to come out in this field. This is boring. Yeah. But, you know, like good things come to those who wait, I guess. I, I don't want to sound cliche, but, uh, yeah, I it's it's something I'm learning in, in a lot of things. Um, that It's patience and, and consistency and just – Hashtag keep pounding. That's right, Panthers. Yeah, hey, there you go. Yep. And so, <laughs> there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days, and you just got to, you know, ride out the, the bad ones and, you know, just hope for another a good one to come soon. Yeah, there you go. What is one non-fitness thing that you want to accomplish in your life? One non-fitness thing. Um, 
Like, is there is there some crazy like I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro? I mean, I guess that's kind of fitness related because you got to train a little bit. But <laughs> like, I want to I want I want to jump from an airplane. I want to go to space. Like, is there? I want to go to Disney World and be on stage in lightsaber duel with Darth Vader. De- definitely none of the uh, the mountains and plains stuff. I'm not a big heights guy, so I'm I'm gonna keep my feet on the ground. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and as I've flown probably hundreds of times traveling with my job, but um, I, yeah, I don't even like flying. But I think you know, especially the past like year or so, just kind of like you know talking about you know the Tim Ferriss kind of guys, just you know just go to you know Thailand or just somewhere random like that, just get a one way flight and just go for you know a week, a month, or six months, or just however long, and just kind of wing it. I think that'd be awesome. Obviously, I've had to get the uh, the wife on board, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, something that I just you know really had a, a stronger desire to do here lately. You know, obviously, I'd need to you know grow my brand enough so where I could you know operate from wherever I want to go. But um, just you know, yeah, just go somewhere that I've never been before and just wing it. Okay, I yeah, I agree. I was actually listening to uh, the Tim Ferriss. Uh, uh, on Vagabond, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, that just came out a couple of days ago, and he was, it was, he was like, yeah, just go somewhere and just kind of start walking. And I was like, I want to do that. I, <laughs> I was like, I wish the world didn't hate each other so much because I would love to just be like, you know what? I'm going caveman. I'm just going to start walking. Yep. And just see the world, but you can't really do that in a lot of places. <laughs> Cause yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, what superhero would you want to be and why? Ooh, um, I'm gonna. I, I don't want to say the answer that I want you to that I, that you want to hear because I remember I think from from other ones. Um, I guess maybe maybe Iron Man just because he was cool even outside the. When he was <laughs> Man. You know, he's that you know got all the swag and all the like. You know, just he's the baller even when he's not Iron Man. So okay, I I can I can yeah I can get down on that. <laughs> you, you wanted me to say Captain America, right? No 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 no. I'm I'm dead serious. If you wanted to be Deadpool, awesome. Deadpool's cool. <laughs> if you want to be Colossus because he has like giant metal muscles, even better. If you were like, you know what? I really like Kitty Pride. I don't know why. I want to be a female superhero. <laughs> More power to you. Um, no, I just it's. I grew up. I, I got in the comics late, um, and yeah, it was a part of my life, but not as much as some of my friends that I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, you know, you look up, you see those people, and you see those characters, and I think for the longest time, you know, you're kind of like, oh, so that's what you got to do to be a man. Like, I got to look like that. I got to, I got to feel like that. Mm-hmm. The reason I love Cap is I felt, always felt like Cap. He stood for something more than what the rest of them did. Um, that he felt like he had a, he had a calling. You know, it was his duty to to do his job and to help people and and to you know save the world in a way. He he wasn't as flawed as everyone else. And I guess a part of me always admired that that you know he just he had this really big idea of conviction and what is right and what is wrong, and he just did what was right. Mm-hmm. Um, plus he. Also had an awesome physique, and I was a <laughs> scrawny little kid, so yeah. I did kind of look up to him in that aspect. Um, so you go to the doctor, Brian, and the doctor says to Brian, "Brian, no more bacon or no more deadlifts. What do you choose?" No more. I'm, I'm, I hate myself for saying this, but I guess bacon. <laughs> it's a hard choice. I love <laughs> deadlifting. I live in. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I can. I can. I can agree with that. If the doctor told me that, I'd be like, uh, uh, I don't know what I want to do. I, I. You know what I'd probably do? I would go deadlift as much as I could and set my last PR, and then like scarf down bacon, and then sit on my couch and go, okay, which one did I love more? <laughs> uh, so, what are you currently reading, and what are you currently watching on Netflix? Um, reading uh, the opposite cool is the way uh, by yes. Ryan. Yes, so good. It is. I uh, love it. Yes, agree. Um, net, we're actually 
we're not really Netflix people, but the last show I guess we we binged watched was um, season two of Newsroom. Okay. That, yeah, that's. I think that was probably our, our most recent one, hmm. which is really excellent. If you haven't uh, haven't seen it, uh, I actually I've seen like the first season, and I liked it, but I wasn't really sure how I like felt about it. <laughs> Um, mostly because I like at the point that that season ended, I threw my hands up and I went, uh, "That's it, I'm done with politics." Like I've, <laughs> I've been, I literally have been politic free since February, and it's been, it has been the best decision I've ever made in my life. I I, I agree completely. I'm actually very politic free uh, in in real life, which is kind of why I'm surprised. I love that show so much. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just, you know, Aaron Sorkin is just a, an amazing writer and. So good. Yeah, it's just, it's nonstop. I was actually talking to one of my buddies recently, and he was like, the show almost moves too fast for me, just because, I mean, it yeah. was like 90 mile an hour for like the whole hour. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big a big fan of Aaron Sorkin. I actually like his plays a little better than uh, than some of his movies or mm-hmm. or TV shows, except for The West Wing, only because Martin Sheen is awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was... A show I have yet to get into. Um, I'm trying to think of another question because I had a few more and then my phone decided to delete. I got a new phone, so I'm still trying to figure all this out. Uh, <laughs> so I guess just tell me a little bit about uh, about where you – why Fact and Fitness? Why that name? <laughs> That's actually the uh, – I guess it was last summer. It, was, it would have been last July of 2013 um, whenever I – finally decided that I was going to actually like start a blog and, and kind of do all this. I, uh, I was actually at work. I, I texted my wife and I was like, you know, and it was just like a random, like you know, Tuesday morning or something. And I was just like, you know, what? I'm going to do it. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. And I was like, I need a name for it. And I was like, cause I'm not, I, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And um, so she was just like, well text uh, her, her friend, Brittany, who she, you know, she, she's real creative and everything. So I sent her, sent her friend a text. And I um, mean, she didn't know like that I was going to be doing this. And I just said like, you know, Hey, I'm going to start a health and fitness blog. I was like, where should I call it? And she like, you know, asked me a couple questions and she was like, all right, I'll get back to you with some things. I was like, all right. Like five minutes later, she's like, how about fact and fitness? And I was like, I love it. And then she sent me another one. She's like, you get it because it's like fact or fiction. And I was like, yeah. I, I, I mean, literally like that morning I just, you know, went on GoDaddy and the domain was free and I, and I got it. So it's just, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I I love the name. Like it, when when I when I saw it and uh, and sent you a message, I was like, that name's really good. What is <laughs> like? That's really like that's really good. I wish I could take credit for it. I should have just said <laughs> I came up with it, but. <laughs> well, you know, as long as she doesn't someday go, hey, royalties, pay them to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, a couple a couple of fun questions here to 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 wind down uh, the the interview. Okay. What is your favorite barbecue place in North in Charlotte? I know there's a lot of people who listening might be like, oh, it doesn't apply to me, but I just I gotta know. I love a barbecue. Um, probably for me R and R, and that's that's even like just Concord. I don't. That's not even like a Charlotte one. So unless you're really local, you probably haven't heard of it. Okay. All right. What is what is the guilty pleasure that is on your workout mix that you hate to admit or would never admit to people? That's on your workout mix. I need to work on the wording of that question. <laughs> um, I will, I'm either going to go one of two ways. Um, I, I love the like kind of old school punk emo music. So you know anything. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. Sunday something like that or some brand new and then to go on the complete opposite spectrum i i'm so like bro country like i love florida georgia line and guys like yeah. that um so you know probably just you know those are two probably the you know bands i listen to most frequently especially at the gym okay i don't really do a lot of you know you know i don't have the like taylor swift or justin bieber <laughs> stuff, so it's well what do you what do you listen to when you're outside of the gym then uh, pretty much the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm pretty uneventful and when it comes so, to music. You, you're in Concord. I got, I got to ask, and we're talking about music. Are you an Avitz fan? Of course. All right. All right. I figured as much. You can't live, <laughs> you can't, you can't be from North Carolina and not be like, yeah, Avitz brothers. <laughs> uh, 
Awesome. Uh, what I, and I, I'm, I'm starting to change my, my take on this word and I'm going to include, I'm one day, I'm going to have a blog post on this one day and I, and I don't like using it, but it works because everyone knows it when you say it, but what is your favorite cheat food? And if it's a cookout milkshake, what flavor? Oh, I mean, I haven't been to cookout since college. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I really don't. Uh, I mean, I would, I'm, I've never really been a big sweets guy. So for me, I mean, if I'm going to, you know, kind of quote unquote cheat, I'd really go to, you know, somewhere and get, you know, 10 hot wings and have a couple beers. Okay. I'm just, I'm not, I've never really been a big, you know, cake guy or, or milkshake guy. Okay. I got you. Beer or bourbon? Uh, I guess it depends on the time of day or what day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I'll go beer though. I, I love IPAs, and we've got so many, so many awesome, uh, you know, breweries around Charlotte that there's t plenty of, uh, there's too many good options. Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff going on in yeah. in our own home state with uh with brewing. Um, yeah. So, all right, well, Brian, I have had a great time here uh, talking with you. Um, if people want to find you, let's let's plug Brian Compton a little bit. Where can they find you in social media, and uh, where can they find you on your blog? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pretty pretty much any uh, any social media outlet, you know, Twitter, Instagram, um, photography. You know, I'm Fact and Fitness. Um, Facebook, you know, fa or Facebook.com/slash Fact and Fitness. Uh, my blog is FactandFitness.com, and you know, you just email me Brian at FactandFitness.com. So I'm pretty easy to uh, to get a hold of. Okay, and and one more one more question. So, what is one piece of advice you would give a client who who comes to you and says, "Brian, I want to take you at, as as a coach. I want you to coach me." What's the first thing that you tell them as a coach? Uh, I mean, really, and, and that's actually a great question because I had this conversation um, this well, I email this morning with a client that started yesterday. Um, you know, she said, you know, how I've never been able to like succeed in dieting. So she's like, how is yours going to be different than, than what I've done previously? And I was like, because it's like what I'm going to teach you isn't a diet like this. It's a lifestyle. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you a meal plan and tell you to eat, you know, egg whites and spinach every day and, you know, do this workout every day for the next 12 weeks. You know, it's cause then, you know, once the meal plan's over, then what are you going to do? Then you're going to go back to your old eating habits and you're going right. to put on the, you know, the stats I gave you earlier. Um, so I just I really you know kind of preach it as a, as a lifestyle like my kind of the, the main component of my program is that I you know I focus on educating them that way after the 12 weeks or however long we're up together that they can you know indefinitely you know maintain this lifestyle that I'm going to teach them um, you know long after our time is over together. All right, I like that. I like that. Well, guys, uh, if you have enjoyed Brian here. Uh, please go check him out at factandfitness.com. Find him on Facebook at Facebook backslash Facebook.com backslash fact and fitness. They gotta make it easier to find things on Facebook. Okay. Um, on Twitter at Fact and Fitness. Uh, are you on Instagram? Do you yes, Instagram, yep, Fact and Fitness. Okay. Fact and Fitness. Um, you know, for those selfie days. Uh, and sure. also keep a lookout for his photography classes uh, coming up. Like you said, he's hoping to start another one at the new year to get everyone's New Year's resolutions going. Uh, Brian has a lot of great stuff. Uh, I, I'm very glad you came on the show. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and guys, please check us out as well on Twitter at SideQuestFM, on Instagram at SideQuestFM. You can also find us by going to that little search bar on Facebook and typing in SideQuest Podcast. Uh, and if you're on Google Plus there as well, if you want to email me, say you enjoy the show, SideQuestPodcast at Gmail. Dot com. But the most important thing, please go to iTunes, hit the su subscribe button, leave us a review. That helps us move up the charts. We hit new and noteworthy. I want to hit the what's hot section. So leave us a review. Get us there. I have lots of great guests lined up and a lot of great information out there to help anyone who's on their side quest of losing weight. Brian, thank you for coming on. And uh, I had a great time and I look forward to all the work that you're doing and all the uh, the good progress picks coming out from all of your clients. Absolutely, thanks. All right. Too. I've been, enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.